There's there's complicated pre-flight checks here, you yeah. know, yeah. like hold your so horses a bit. For, for those, like, once again, to take you behind baseball listeners, uh, we are fucking stupid, dumb, idiot people. Yes. Yeah. Uh, we are very bad at our jobs, and yet Freely some admitted. of you, yeah, and uh, some of us, uh, some, some of us, Roz, uh, have two cats who are, as I can only describe as wily bastards. Yes. Uh, who interfere and see and seek to usurp him at every possible opportunity. Well, I did manage to stuff all their cat hair in my computer. They, they um, are very handsome boys. Uh, yeah, Devin, yeah. Uh, in post, can you please insert uh, the picture of Roz being smothered by his cats? <laughs> oh, there's several. That's a of great those. picture. Yeah, I love those pictures. Every time you post one on Instagram, I'm 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 a happy boy. So yeah, that's why we're recording from my laptop today which yeah. is not set up to quickly no. cause podcasts to occur. So I've been confused and disoriented. No, I, I will <laughs> be building you a new PC. Listeners, please be aware that I am going to spend so much of your money. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, because, so because your sole Too guideline much. here, the yeah. sole guideline that Justin has given you is, I want to be able to play City Skylines 2. But which, we know how he plays City Skylines right, 1, right, which means right. he this needs... Is a good point. <laughs> He needs the kind of shit that they've got in the basement of the NSA. Yeah, like you are yeah, gonna have to yeah. go to Fort Meade with a crowbar and try and like unplug hey, some hey, shit. Yes. Hey, hey, no, hey, whoa, don't shoot, don't. Let's all calm down. What is that behind my back? Nothing, nothing. I, nothing. I, I, hey, I am whoa! Backing, I am backing a rider truck up to the loading dock at <laughs> Fort Meade and trying to wheel out the supercomputer. <laughs> what it, I'm doing? It's public what property. Do- it's it's and, public property. It belongs to me, the public. And yet, <laughs> <laughs> Ross will still defy me and not install any of his new hard drive, which is why I'm getting him an M2 SSD. So he has to put it on the motherboard. So that way he can't run out of storage anymore. I have carte blanche, as far as I know, to build him a computer that can play modded City Skylines 2. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Mm. Uh, oh, Ross, here we are on vacation, about to slide to our desk like we did that one time. Uh, off that coast road. Uh, yes. Um, yeah. Uh, welcome to Well, There's Your Problem. It's a podcast about engineering disasters with slides. Which, which is itself an engineering disaster. You would not believe the shit we had to do today to get this, oh to, to get this going. I'm Justin Rosniak. I'm the person who's talking right now. My pronouns are he and him. Okay, go. I am Alice Caldwell Kelly. I'm the person who's talking now. My pronouns are she and her. Yay, Liam. Yay, Liam. Hi. My name is Liam Anderson. My pronouns are he, him. And for once, I'm not the person pinning your comments in the YouTube videos. That was Roz this week. I was about to say, uh, uh, shout out to the guy who only respects me, because I don't respect you. Um, (laughs) (laughs) So um, what you see in front of you um, is is a beautiful car. A beautiful car, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, uh, Which is... What you see here is a scene from a a 70s... It's it's, it's the... (laughs) Land-based Poseidon adventure. Yes. There's also a large bulk ship. What there is not is most of a bridge. <laughs> mm. Yeah, that car's sort of precipitously uh, um, on the yeah. edge of some Very, of a bridge. Sort of a rakish angle that, again, you would only get in a movie. Um, mm. <laughs> so uh, I wonder what these bumper stickers are. I wish there was a higher yeah, resolution I was, version I was of trying this. to work that out, yeah. too, but I couldn't. Yeah. Uh, yeah, U.S. out of everywhere. I don't know. I don't know either. Um, today we're going to talk about the 1980 Sunshine Skyway Bridge collapse uh, just outside uh, St. Petersburg, Florida. Oh, we're going to Florida. Going uh, to Florida. We're going back to the Florida mines. Uh, yeah, did you keep right. my slide dunking on the lightning in here? Uh, yes. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. Before we do that, we have to do the goddamn news. You, you can see that um, uh, uh, I did this on a laptop because the font is wrong here because I don't have that the, font on my laptop. I think oh, the font in the Chiron. Uh, I think I, it looks like trash. No, you should uh, be ashamed I, and embarrassed. I Many am people, ashamed and embarrassed. Many people do this without the visual component, so I will say that this is... Yeah, uh, and to those people, I am going to keep... I'm going to keep uploading the bonuses, and I'm going to correct the fact that I uploaded college twice. Yeah. One of it's incomplete. One, it should be Protestantism, and we I got that wrong. I was very tired. So bad yeah. at our jobs. <laughs> very, very bad but at not podcasting. As bad. 
not as bad as this man, Elon Musk, uh, because once again, e Elon Musk has tried to send a thing to space, and once again, Elon Musk, who is, again, an Earth cuck who has never been to yeah. space, an Earth um, cock. Yeah. I, I mean, even I mean, fucking Jeff Bezos has been to space. Elon Musk never been to space. You know why? Because he's afraid of it. This, because he's a this, pussy. This news happened a couple weeks ago, and uh, you know we didn't comment on uh, comment on it at the time for reasons I forget. Um, but you know it it has. We already put the slides um, together. Yeah, we'd already put mm -hmm. the slides together. But you know the thing is, uh, yeah, Elon Musk tried the first launch of the fully assembled quote unquote starship. Right, it got off the landing pad. It went up. It blew up uh, over Dude, the Gulf of Mexico. You're embarrassing yeah. us in front of the aliens. You know, yeah. like yeah. this is how I feel whenever a Jewish person does crime. I'm like, think of the goyim. What will the goyim think? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. What will what will the Greys at Area 51 think of this, knowing that we on like a sort of like Lagrange Point surveillance station right now? Some aliens are like pointing and laughing at us as a planet because of yeah. this fucking guy. Yeah, and and this is like one of these things where, uh, you know, I guess SpaceX was like, all right, well, you know, all we needed was the data from it launching off the pad, uh, you know, so this is a great mission success, but it's sort of Bullshit. a lot of people were all into that, and even I. Even I was kind of like, okay, yeah, you know, you blow up rockets sometimes, whatever. A lot of black rockets in the early days blew up, you know. But mm. here's the here's the real thing. Here's the kicker that got me is here on the next slide, which is they oh, completely yeah. destroyed the launch pad in the process, right? They just sort of you... blasted all of this atomized concrete all over Jesus. nature preserves and into a bunch of towns that were like six miles away. Uh, damage their own mm. natural gas tanks back here. Um, I'm not sure if this is supposed to look like this, but it sure looks like a like concrete was blasted off this leg. That may be what it's supposed to look like. I'm yeah, not but sure. Th th they, uh. they took out an innocent minivan with big chunks of concrete hail. Mm -hmm. I um, I mean, here's the thing. I generally think that a launch pad is supposed to be a reusable piece of equipment, and yes. not well, so much in this case. Well, Elon tweeted something a long time ago. He's like aspiring to have no flame diverter in Boca, but this could turn out to be a mistake. This is uh, uh, can you Boca explain Chica. Why why a flame diverter matters? Okay, so you know. okay, so it matters because that means the concrete doesn't get blasted away. The flame okay. diverter will, you know, it it has divert the flame. <laughs> yeah, it has a channel in such a way it diverts the flame around. That means you need to dig a big pit, right? Which, which is expensive, okay, I assume. This is, yeah, it's near, uh, this is near an ocean, right? So the water table is high. Uh, so ah. they're like, well, high water table means you can't dig. I've heard this excuse over and over for lots of civil engineering pro projects, when in fact there are many, many counterexamples to it, like let's say Cape Canaveral in this case, um, <laughs> which also <laughs> happens to be near an ocean and has a flame diverter. Um, so, you know, this is like, okay, Elon doesn't want to pay for a sump pump um, you know, and <laughs> yeah, and like, for, as a result, he's being like investigated and may get fined by like one or other of the authorities over this flame diverter shit because yeah, and he they've, cannot they've, make a mistake without tweeting about how he's doing it at the time. They've, they've they've grounded like the Starship project the FAA has, um, because this is an unacceptable level of damage. The exploding the rocket was fine, although I understand the self destruct took like. 40 seconds to activate or some bullshit longer than it should have, um, which, you know, is very dangerous considering the rockets go fast. Um, you know, uh, one of the things that really is striking about this entire like launch complex here, um, you can see the Boca Chica launch complex here, um, is how small it is. Mm. Um, I think at the same uh, scale, you know, uh, Cape Canaveral launch pads would be like just the launch pad itself would be like this size, like four or five times bigger. Uh, this is the whole complex, including fuel tanks and outbuildings, rocket storage. Here's the tiny parking lot over here. Um, you know, it, it's like very, very, very compact. And when you're you're trying to like launch the world's biggest super duper heavy rocket from there, you figure maybe you could use a bit more space. Um, but nah, uh, let's just on the try cheap. budget rocket. Yeah. Train, you know, it's, it's, there's, there is, there is definitely a, a budget. Don't worry aspect about of this. these guys. I played tons of Kerbal. 
I got this. And I don't know why I'm doing this voice. <laughs> <laughs> he, he he is one of the world's richest people. Uh, although he's doing yeah, his best to you know divest himself of that because he is a comrade. Um, yes. <laughs> oh, no. Elon Musk is a comrade. It's gonna yeah. get us killed. Listen, uh, okay. listen, I I don't know of many billionaires who are doing wealth redistribution as aggressively <laughs> as Elon Musk is. This is true. Yeah, I mean. You know that the 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 thing here is this is that this is a goofy failure to have. You should not have this particular failure. Like if 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 your complex rocket goes wrong, I get that. But this this is fucking concrete. That shit's easy. <laughs> <laughs> All you had to do was put a sump pump in and like yeah, one of those and big water failure systems. <laughs> Yeah, he fucked up at the like the technology of a trench. A which... trench, a trench, and some water guns. <laughs> Incredible I, work. I guess one of his theories was okay, we need to be able to use these starship rockets on Mars where we're not gonna have a launch pad, which okay, whatever. But there's also yeah, no but you build for that when you need to build for that, dude. Y- like... You know where people don't usually park their minivans is Mars. Mars. Yeah, there's also no protected wildlife on Mars. I mean, you know, so that we know like of. that we know of. Yeah. I mean, oh, maybe a... what about the man and the what about the, the man on Mars? Ooh, yeah. yeah. The man, the man that, is, did you? The man is on the moon, not on no, Mars. There's a, there, isn't there a guy the man there's on Mars? There's a guy Mars. on Mars. There's supposed to be a guy on Mars. Yeah. That was, it was the, it was it was a it was a feature of a like a terrible science fiction movie. Yeah, yeah. Also, right. I've seen The Martian, Roz. How do you I've, explain that? I've heard yeah, they're going to take away from there. Matt Damon. Yeah, Matt Damon's still up there being real racist. <laughs> well, at least then he'd have an, an excuse for not supporting the uh, Writers Guild strike. Oh, you um, fucking <laughs> tell him, Roz! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, you know, I, I think uh, if you're launching this thing from Mars, you 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 can worry a lot less about like debris and shit, you know, because uh, mm. again, there's there's not there's not much up there to hurt. But you know, this this fucking shit, like, holy god, this is embarrassing. Um, <laughs> I I mean, I look forward to Elon facing absolutely no negative consequences for this, and the stakes only getting higher until they're fucking around with like nuclear engines or whatever, and he just fucking Chernobyl's a decent part of Florida. Oh yeah. Well, I'd have to shoot him up into space first. I don't think they work great in the atmosphere. Uh, I mean, if ever we found the man to try, that's a good point. Yeah. Um, so yeah, uh, SpaceX, uh, really fucked up, uh, Mm -hmm. and it's pretty funny, but also, you know, pretty bad that they murdered a bunch of wildlife and, uh, poisoned two towns potentially. Yeah. Yeah. It's not great. Also not great if that's your minivan. Um, if if that was your PT Cruiser, (laughs) mm. Oh, I assume that person got compensated. I I like a PT (laughs) Cruiser. That's my fucking problem. Actually, I think it was a Ford Galaxy, but, uh, you know, don't quote me on that. Wow, we shot a rocket to the Ford Galaxy. Ooh. <laughs> You've heard of Andromeda, now get ready for Ford. Why does everyone have SS tattoos? Oh my god. <laughs> okay. In other news. Speaking of embarrassing failures that should never uh, happen. Yeah, speaking yeah, we... of embarrassing failures that should never happen, my mom watched this live. Oh my oh god. god. <laughs> we had the political version of one of these in, in the like, United uh... Kingdom. I was like, I'll, I'll catch the coronation highlights later, you know? Maybe someone will, like, <laughs> slip on a banana peel or something. That'd be entertaining. I, I mean, I was kind Dolan of hoping... Dolan Bede, it. windmill dunk on King Charles III. King Charles III draws the tech, is thrown out of the game. King Joel Embiid abolishes the kingdom, uh, reunites Ireland, heroically prevails as savior of the world. I think, God, is I that Corbin's have... music? <laughs> <laughs> I think they should have had like um like fights like a hockey game specifically mm-hmm. should have broken out mm-hmm. here. Like I want to see I want to see the king throwing off his crown like an ice hockey helmet in order oh, yeah. to get in a fight with somebody. I think that would have been worthwhile. Instead, what we got was a boringly orchestrated thing where they lubed up an old man behind yeah. the screen, so you couldn't even see him getting lubed up. Um, oh, the, the, give the, the people lube. what they want. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Restore some sensuality to this progress. Uh, I, I'm not even joking, by the way. They're like the lubing, the sort of like oiling up is is an essential part of this. Um, uh, that that is where someone would have slipped on something. They slip on the, yeah, uh, the royal oil. Yeah. Yeah. Um, royal like, oil. The royal it's oil. Uh, 
Well, on. One thing, one thing that they did do though was arrest a bunch of protesters on really flimsy pretexts. Yeah, that uh, was in case right they it. Disrupted the thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because they rushed through a new public order act that basically makes sort of all forms of protest illegal. Um, and the, the test case for that was sort of Republicans with a smaller. Of course, R. it was. Yeah. Um, one thing that is interesting here is if you look at the crown. It's got enough mm -hmm. jewelry in it that it goes all the way around looking expensive to looking cheap again. It just looks it's like true. costume jewelry. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, it's yeah. like, oh, party, party king. Um, yeah, I'm the party king. Also, <laughs> the weird sort of like purple robe that looks very cheap and like Hogwartsy. Yeah. Um, and uh, yeah, no, so th this, is, this is our king now. I'm told, and I I really don't care for it in the slightest. Um, I I said this before, but I I would tolerate a sort of holdover queen out of like leftover affection, but kings. No. Yeah, you got a king no, now. Thank you. You got a you got a bow down to this yeah, guy. They, yeah, you're a subject. I'm not, I'm not gonna bow down to this guy. I'm simply not gonna. The one thing that was very well, funny you was better they... you better move to America then. Yeah, <laughs> get, finally get that green card. Uh, one thing yeah. that that uh, we could was probably funny. lie to immigration and get you a green card. Uh, <laughs> I don't have that's... to lie to immigration. I married an American. Um, there you go. Well, like, that 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 takes all the fun out of it. Is I know, I know, my green card <laughs> marriage. Uh, but like, um, one thing that was very funny was they tried to get people to say the oath. There was going to be an oath, and they oh, wanted you to like this. stand up in front of your TV and say McDonald's or whatever. Try to get people to stand up in front of their television and say the word. Uh huh. And <laughs> hey, uh, in post, can we do just that. do a can we do a rotation of uh, Cornwallis's surrender at Yorktown? Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> I would also appreciate a shot of the original patent for saying McDonald's in front of your TV to to end the McDonald's <laughs> ad. Uh, but yeah, so so they were going to do that, and then they had to like. Do an embarrassing climb down when they realized no one was gonna fucking do it, and they had to be Why like, "Why would oh, you do that? Really it was very stupid." Yeah. Inviting people to like say it if they want to, and no one did. Mm -hmm. um, they force you to do it. They have to install like a 1984 telescreen sort of thing. Sort yeah, of situation. Yeah, yeah. yeah. The two minutes hate, but you just had to say McDonald's over and over. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what was really funny was the amount of enthusiasm for this really tapered off outside London. Uh, like Glasgow, I saw, didn't I do saw shit. that. It was amazing. Uh, in Wales, uh, home, home of the Devon, Denby Council, Denbyshire uh, County Council, allocated seventy pounds for festivities. God that was the whole budget, That's which is great. Right. <laughs> so, like, we, you can get we, like a couple of beers for yeah. like. We 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 had a very small pizza party. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> we all we went had, down to we the chippy, and uh, that's it. Yeah, There's your sure. money, folks. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, to to celebrate the coronation of King Charles the Third, we went to Chuck E. Cheese, and yeah. <laughs> uh, we we solemnly said the oath with the rat in from the Chuck E. Cheese. In the ball yeah, pit. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> just in the ball pit. There's like a loose orb in there, and you're just like, where the fuck did this come from? Oh, hey, hey. Back in your hole, hey! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so that's that's we 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 got a king now, and I don't care for it. I think we should probably have a some kind of president or something instead. Oh yeah, it would have, also you, suck, but in a different way. Yeah, I can confirm. You have a uh, you can have George W. Bush. Oh, w. Well, I mean, you're you're not yeah. using them, like yeah, yeah exactly. Why not? That's a good point. Yeah, yeah we'll you trade can, you. you. Yeah, mm -hmm. we and get Boris. Roz will, Roz will do the Titles of Nobility Act to King Charles. I will leave that up to the listener oh, to yes. determine what that means. <laughs> <laughs> means he has to renounce. Uh, he has to renounce his title of nobility, or he can't be a U.S. citizen. That's easy enough. I. I'm, I... <laughs> All right. Thank you. Thank you yeah. for taking away the the mm. mysticism of the joke, douchebag. Yeah. No. I I support the Titles Nobility Act, and I, I always I want I want I, the I, thing. I, I, I want know, people but... to understand what it is and oh, why it's God. important. Anyway, in other news. Our big special boy, George Santos, has been charged. He's been indicted. 14 counts. And Wire fraud. Got to let wire him fraud. Keep... Yeah. Wire and fraud and lie to Congress. Yeah, uh, don't do that. Uh, they're going to let him continue to serve while it works its way through the courts. Uh, because Lord knows Kevin McCarthy can't afford uh, any missing votes. Especially <laughs> if, if a DOJ won't let a bitch cook even one time. 
I think uh, DOJ I, should let a bitch cook even one time. Like, the, the, the charges, right? Uh, what is the charge? Enjoying your own campaign funds to purchase some succulent designer clothes. Is that a crime? Is, sh okay. Should that be a crime? A I don't think that Chinese should... meal. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and I mean, the thing is, right, he dresses like shit. Like, a uh, menswear guy could really go off on this guy. The, mm. the weird sweater thing, the like poorly fitting jackets, but apparently there's a lot of money in there. Um, you know, maybe that's like it's a real sort of cashmere stuff. knit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, I don't know, but I, I, I think let him cook, my yeah. opinion. Uh, I think it's it's very funny that that uh, I mean Menendez served under indictment as well uh, back in 2015. Numerous mm -hmm. Republicans have done it until Duncan Hunter did it until he was found guilty back in 2020. Duncan Hunter, the guy yeah. who like grifted the vape codes, vapes. Yes, yeah. yes, yeah. I mean, I feel like I feel like you know this may get us Santos back in the news because he was very funny when he he was in the news, but then for a while it sort of died down. So now oh, I'm hoping he, he does a lot of weird stuff again. Yeah, mm. as opposed to just being like an out and out Nazi, which which yeah. is not particularly fun or amusing, obviously. Yeah, yes, he's we just know, a weird pathological we liar. Is, it's like, an irreverent podcast. Just fucking live with it. Mm -hmm. But like a, a, electing a weird pathological former drag queen uh, serial grifter. Honestly, they were cooking with that one, yeah. and I support them. Um, they, they elected the monorail guy from The Simpsons. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, 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 exactly. And like, here's the thing, every Republican congressperson is a grifter of some sort or another, yeah. and like, they're all criminals. So are the um, Democrats, for that matter. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> every congressperson is absolutely a criminal and a grifter, and uh, I'm excited to debut uh, a new piece of woodworking on the National Mall uh, that might sort of like help remediate some of these things, but in the meantime, they could at least be entertaining, and this one is entertaining. Oh. Sorry, I was yes, taking my socks off. Oh my god. <laughs> See, that's yeah. that's the premium content, you know? Oh yeah. yeah, yeah oh, yeah. welcome to welcome to Footsie Hour. Uh, uh, Liam Anderson Wicker feet. Mm. No, yeah. you don't want to see that. You've I, seen my feet, man. I, I have, and I don't want to see them, yeah. That's what I said. <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, uh, I, you know, it, 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 I, I do think they should let a bitch cook as long as that bitch gets better clothes. And I say mm. this as someone who dresses like shit. I, I don't dress well. Mm. I, I think I dress reasonably dress well. Better than we do. Mm -hmm. Not especially well, a hard, hard challenge, but yeah. Yeah, say, it, yeah. Also, you know, the trans femininity putting me on a slightly a higher ground here. Um, but yeah, I, I feel as if. I haven't been grifting from the podcast to do it, so I've just been letting like outfits go squandered. You know, the the you they're left by the wayside. You gotta start grifting from the podcast. Yeah, I gotta start grifting from. I gotta start committing some wire fraud. Um, yeah, we'll start. Care. Yeah, 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 exactly. So that I can get these fits. You know, um, I don't know how exactly. Like, you could try and start embezzling, but. Well, you can embezzle for me. I wouldn't notice. I mean, yeah, you wouldn't but... notice. Uh, <laughs> can, I just, can I just like have your share from go, like going <laughs> forward? Like, uh, no, no. At some point, I do need need that money. Um, <laughs> Jesus Christ! <laughs> you people, you fucking people. You've made him too powerful, you the listener. Because know. like yeah, I, I, Liam, I, I, Liam and I, we need that money. We need that to pay rent, and then Justin will just not. And I don't. I, I, I'm sitting on it right now, I, and God I, knows I, what I, I'm going to do with it. Ah, my finger's on the trigger. My finger's on the trigger of the buy Gen 1 Viper button, Roz. Is that what you want? <laughs> <laughs> the business end of the podcast is still a mess, dear listener. Uh, don't mm -hmm. don't read too much into that, please. To, please do not steal. For, it's, please, please do not, like, somehow defraud us. Anyway. No, no, that's why I yeah. handle the money, because yeah. at least I, I know where it goes. Yeah. Mm. Well, no, actually, I don't correct us. Yeah. <laughs> Total fucking incompetence. Yeah. Uh huh. Uh huh. Um. Well, thank that. you for your money. We yes, uh, thanks. We need yes. it. <laughs> <laughs> that was the goddamn news. I think I got to turn my gain down a little bit. I'm redlining here.
Oh, okay. Uh, but this it. is the this is the slide where Liam can rant about Tampa. I fucking hate Tampa, man. I uh, I've been to Tampa before. It fucking sucks. There's nothing to do there. Yeah, yeah. Tell me about the fucking lightning. Uh, do we have the? Uh, we do we just have the the crying? Oh, you you took out the statement where they got swept by the jackets. Uh, back in nineteen. Uh, it's uh yeah. I I I have nothing positive to say about Tampa. I have nothing to say positively about most of Florida. Uh, absolutely shit city. Nothing to do there. People who live there are fucking lying to you. They don't live in Tampa. They live somewhere else, some somewhere deep in the shithole that is Florida. Uh, I will say, uh, fuck the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Uh, fuck the, the Tampa Lightning. Bay. The Tampa Bay Bucks are going to make it all the way through January. Uh, it's, uh, you got to believe that, you know? Yeah, yeah. I mean, they they won a Super Bowl with Brady, uh, but mm-hmm. yeah, I I believe. I just hate Tampa. I will say, a, a dear friend's brother lives in Tampa, and he's convinced trying to convince her to move. And I'm just like, never leave fucking Philly. I think that's where my hatred recently has stemmed from is I've invented this rivalry between Philadelphia and Tampa. And mm. uh, as 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 a as a co-chair of the uh, Philadelphia burning down your city, uh, coming into the suburbs to loot your TV and do Antifa to you. Uh, <laughs> I, I just I just fucking hate this place, man. There's nothing fucking redeemable about it. My ex is my my ex girlfriend's good Jesus mother's boyfriend, we'll say lives uh, huh? around Tampa. I fucking hate that guy. He still owes me 400 bucks. Uh, a guy, absolutely- th- th- listen, the thing is, right, if you graph the number of TVs that are in Tampa versus should be in Philly, yeah, you, we, you, give, you gotta give go down there. All, like, give them all to us. Mm-hmm, yeah. mm-hmm. Uh, I just, I mean, I'm looking at the, the Google Maps of Tampa right now, and it's just fucking depressing. I, I, I feel bad picking on him, honestly. It's just like, what the fuck is the point of this place? Sink it. Sink mm. it. Sink it. <laughs> You've heard of land back. Now get ready yeah. for ocean back. Ocean back, yeah. Well, this is the worst part is Tampa isn't even going to get flooded that badly. Like, South Florida's fucked. Because right. uh, it's all like three feet under sea level already. Like, Miami Beach is just fucked. In oh, the next yeah, there's going to be happens. no more Miami in 20. Yeah, but like, uh, you know, absent, I mean, like, yeah, there's going to be water coming out through the limestone and stuff. There's going to be a shitload more, like, new lakes and stuff. But, like, Tampa's not going to sink, at least not for a long while, um, <coughs> which sucks. It's going to be sort of the bastion of, like, Ron DeSantis's anti woke uh, campaign. As he sinks uh, into the Atlantic. Yes. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, the hurricanes I, might get it, but, like, I mean, there's just nothing to even fuck it. They have a restaurant depot. I mean, I guess that's nice. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean that's all. I, I think Ybor City school. is supposed to be cool, but that's all I got. I don't know. I just I fucking hate this place. Yeah, the Philly provincialism will never go away. Sorry about it. Yes, that's fine. Um, yeah. Oh, fine. and fuck the bolts. Just while I'm here, yeah. the salary cap exists for a reason. You fucking cheaters. <laughs> Isn't okay, but Tampa. Tampa is also, as I understand it, a um, port. Back when America had those, right? Yes, and actually, yes. Uh, uh, according to the Tampa Bay Ports website, they handle thirty-three million tons of cargo a year and opened in nineteen twenty-four. It's all uh, TVs Ross that has, should be going to Philly. Yeah, it's they big, diverted it's, it's from us. Big. It's big on. Uh, they do. They do a lot of um, phosphate export there, which will be relevant shortly. Um, Because phosphates are a major uh, industry in Florida. Um, You may have heard a a recent bill that's being proposed in Florida that would allow the byproducts of phosphates, notably phospho uh, gypsum, to be used in uh, asphalt. Now, that's a mildly radioactive substance, and um, there's a lot of asphalt, but it would at least finally give them something to do with the massive piles of this radioactive substance which are all over eat florida it. eat um, it <laughs> eat it so they have big sort Struck of it gatsby, all outside disney world and eat it gatsby like sort of like uh ash ash yeah, heaps yeah the, the the valley of ashes except there's no valleys in florida because it's flat it's all mountains of ashes miserable fucking place maybe, dude. maybe they could use that to infill some of the like extremely porous limestone um, uh, that'd be a great idea. Shore I mean, up you could, from the climate a bit. You could build poor people's housing on top of the radioactive ash. That's oh, a great dude, idea. Gonna, <laughs> no, that implies that they would give poor people housing. We know better than that. Yeah, that's a good point. Um, anyway, so to talk about the Sunshine Skyway Bridge, I thought first we should start with what is a cantilever, right? Invented in Scotland. You're welcome. Yes. Um, 
Um, actually, no, it was. I forget where it was invented, but uh, this was not Scotland. the first. It was invented in okay, Scotland. We'll, we'll this... say it's invented in Scotland. Oh there yeah, just like you guys previous... with the mallard, just the like the mallard. Yeah, okay. Mm-hmm. 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 There were there were mm-hmm. previous cantilever bridges. Oh, there like were Hamilton Besser anyway. In in simp- the simplest terms, a cantilever <laughs> is like there's a surface and there's a thing sticking out of it, right? This is a cantilever. Um, hold on. Let me add some hatching so you know this is a solid surface. Anyway, <laughs> you know, so that's thank you. <laughs> that's a cantilever, right? You apply some load, right? It's resisted here. Uh, in this case, it's a fixed connection, so there's also a moment, right? Um, you know, but that that is a uh, really basic uh, cantilever here. But in terms of the bridge, it means something a little more complicated, right? Mm. That's a bridge. Where there's some center span here, which is supported by two big cantilever arms here and here, right? Uh, instead of being supported by, like, you know, a bridge pier that goes into the water, right? So in our example, we can see there's three guys. There's two guys with their feet on the ground. And there's one guy whose feet is not on the ground. Right, and yeah, uh, he's a magician. Uh, Ooh. Yes, an engineering magician. Ooh. Ooh. So, so their arms, these guys' arms, are cantilevers, as well as the sticks they're holding, right. And the guy in the middle is the cantilever section. So they are counterbalanced through the base of their chairs, and through these rods with these large stacks of weight, which allows them to easily lift this man despite having their arms fully extended on both ends. This was sort of the golden age of explaining engineering using guys. Using guys. And that's sort of like a a, a, a lost art. art. Yeah, Yeah. it's a lost art. Yeah, certainly. But uh, using this method, these guys are able to move much more weight than they could have on their own, right? Especially considering it was you know, the Victorian era and everyone was malnourished. Unless the guy in the middle it's, was really malnourished. <laughs> it's it's very funny to imagine them having invented the diagram first and sort of like, uh, we've invented a way to lift a man like a foot off the ground. If only there are a practical application for this. Yes. And and this is uh <laughs> your cantilever bridge has some advantages, um, especially in terms of railways, because this can allow you to have a very long center span here with no support pillars but also having a very rigid structure. Yes. Um, yeah. yeah. Thank you. And much- you, can get, you can get a boat under it, which is yes. what the fourth, uh, the fourth bridge is for, why it's like that. Yes, and this is much, it's much more rigid than a suspension bridge, which can do something similar, but not very good for railways in general. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and also sucks because it's like flexible, which, yeah. you know, in general, eh. But something that's going to come up later is you got to note that at the end of the cantilever, um, you need ballast. You need some way to keep the thing level because your force here is down because you're holding up the guy, right? So you need a, a counteracting force up, uh, you know, in order to keep the guy from, uh, in, in order to stop from dropping the guy, right? That's mm, why you need sure. this, this, this big weight. You need something to counteract the force that is naturally going up uh, from uh, the guys here. Otherwise, if they didn't have these, they would both just lean in, right, and collapse. And the guy would be on the ground and the demonstration would be worthless and everyone would say, ha ha, look at this dumb engineer with this stupid uh, <laughs> demonstration. Yeah, I believe that's actually how it would go verbatim. Yes. Mm. Um, lots of different types of cantilevers out there. Um, here's one in Tibet. You can see it's sort of a a wooden mm. corbelled arch. This is a very wow. old bridge, right? And it's uh, just laden down with all these rocks to keep all that stuff in place. And they put a big wooden plank here, right? And then we have these large pack animals of some kind. I'm not sure what kind they are. They That's might definitely be a yak. You think it's a yak? I think it's a yak. That's a yak. That's so probably a yak. It's a yak. Yeah. You know, yak's milk is pink. Really? I don't like that. 
I don't want to know that. I don't want to know that. <laughs> it tastes um, very buttery. It's very, it's very fatty milk. Um, mm. and it's pink. So it's like a, it's like a Wisconsin margarine. Mm. I have I, no I, idea what that means, but possibly. There was a law in Wisconsin that margarine had to be dyed. I forget it was pink or blue. Um, ah, to shame it. Okay. To shame it, yes. <laughs> so, you know, you sort of early cantilever bridges, your most famous is, of course, as Alice said, the Firth of Forth down here, seen while it was being painted. It's always um, being painted. That's uh, that's actually, uh, that's true. It is literally always being painted. You finish at one end, you have to start again uh, at the other. Like... I thought that was an urban legend. Yeah, possibly it is. I don't know. I don't check these things. Well, I, I'm, I'm not know, an engineer. Like, I, mm, have you mm. ever been there and you didn't see these big white sections? Sure. Then it wasn't being painted. Fuck. Uh, okay, <laughs> disregards. <laughs> so another, another famous one is the Quebec Bridge. We did an episode on that a while back. That's the one that mm -hmm. fell down twice while it was under construction. Um, Sometimes cantilevers are not necessarily these big iron structures. You could have something like the Confederation Bridge. This is, uh, it links Nova Scotia to Prince Edward Island. And this is a series. Great bridge of... goes on for fucking ever. Oh, yeah. Hmm. Um, this, uh, you know, it, it, it has a bunch of concrete sections, right? In between is a smaller concrete section, which sits on the two big ones. And it continues on for, for this like, one. continues on for like nine miles. Mm. I don't care for it. Um, and then there was this. I'll tell him, Alice. Big, yeah. Well, next time we Thank go you. to Prince yeah. Edward Island, we'll complain about it. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I had never Just been. The Canadian there. sort of like regional official being I've genuinely been hurt with, by the I've fact that I don't. Parents. I do not like the bridge aesthetically. The Prince Edward Island, uh, where um, they they were considering putting a rail link over that bridge, and uh. Canadian National very quickly abandoned all the railroads on Prince Edward Island for fear they'd have to keep operating them if they were connected. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you cowards. <laughs> yeah, yeah, very cowardly. I don't like it. Um, but there's a particular type of big steel cantilever bridge that was very prevalent during the construction of the interstate highway system, um, which you can see here in the uh, as our example, the Commodore Barry Bridge, which I believe is the biggest one constructed. I, I, I think of these. I think of these as yeah. like sort of like New Deal and post New Deal bridges. There's a ton of them in Louisiana, right? Like, oh yeah, there's a whole bunch yeah. in Louisiana. Yeah. Yeah. And this is the sort of bridge we're going to talk about today. This is something sort of of that era, like 1950 through 1970 or so. This was the way you did the big bridge. Um, sometimes you do a suspension bridge if it was particularly long. Um, but, you know, the, the cantilever was the way to go. So, now we have to talk about St. Petersburg, Florida. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it looks great, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah I, I know, hate right? from, from here yeah. above, yeah. So, I mean, I think it's quite kind of stealing valor to call it St. Petersburg. It doesn't look like it has shit in the way of defensible forts. Um, when know. the Finns come over the, the bay, you're, you're just fucked, you know? Hosed, yeah. I believe the uh, the old story about why it's named that is that two two guys had a coin toss and one of them would name it depending on who got heads and the one guy was like, "Yeah, I was at St. Petersburg once. That sounds good. Let's call it that." Outstanding. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but St. Petersburg, Florida, was not envisioned as like a tourist town, right? This is supposed to be like an inland port or a port on not an inland port, a port on like a this nice bay right tampa bay. one thing one thing i will say is as w when you guys are leading the sort of like philly antifa to to take all of the tvs in tampa i'm going to take yes. a little detachment a little flying column and i'm going to rename st petersburg to leningrad oh, that'd be pretty good fun. for you that'd be really funny <laughs> so uh you know they thought this is going to be a port town right but you know, Tampa Bay is a great port, but most of the industry and most of the port uh, facilities stayed in Tampa. It was, you know, it's a bigger place, right? Mm. So, but what St. Petersburg turned out to be was a really great tourism town, right? So by the 20s, industry is booming, but getting around the bay was a big problem because it was really big. It was really wide. It was very shallow, right? Mm. 
Um, there was a shipping channel that was dredged fairly early on to get up to the port. But, you know, other than that, you know, if you wanted to, you know, in the 1920s, you, you have cars, but you got to drive all the way around, you know. Uh, you know, like Model T or your Duesenberg or whatever. Yeah, or your, yeah exactly. So at first, um, you know, what are we going to do? We're going to start a ferry. There's these two guys named Charles R. Carter and James mm. E. Bussey. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yes. He yes. invented Dude, it, actually. Please yeah, be invented, respectful, Alice. Invented That's the bu- Sir yeah. Bussey. Sir Bussey. I'm Mr. sorry. Mr. I'm Mr. sorry. Mr. Bussey. Mr. Bussey. <laughs> no, no titles and nobility. He's Mr. Bussey. <laughs> oh, please. My father was Mr. Yeah. Bussey. <laughs> you call me James. <laughs> <laughs> Call me Jim. Uh, Jim Bussy. Jim Bussy. Yeah. 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 They yeah, call so... me Slim Jim Bussy. Yeah. Slim Jim Bussy from Tampa Bay. Good lord. Yeah. I was about to say, not from St. Petersburg. Um, yeah. yeah I, I, I can't think of anything for Charles Carter. That's much less. Uh, what, yeah. Chuck Carter and Slim Jim Bussy. <laughs> <laughs> they create what's called the Beeline Ferry Company. And that gets people across the widest part of Tampa Bay down into the towns of Palmetto and Bradenton, right? Oh, they sound um, horrible. So the, the, that, the, they're better than a lot of other parts of Florida. <laughs> cool. Yeah. You can at least walk from one building to another, theoretically. <laughs> mm. In some parts of these towns. <laughs> Give it a minute and we'll be swimming. But yeah, so the ferry was very popular. Uh, by 1926, you know, with all the people taking this ferry, there was mutterings of, "Well, maybe if we we if the ferries are this overloaded, maybe we should build a bridge, right?" So there's this guy. He's a physiotherapist. He's named Harold Herman Simmons. Uh, goes and just gets a permit and commissional approval to build the damn bridge. A physio? What? Why? Um, he's well, it, back in the day. That was just like it, you didn't really have any sort of professional sense of anything. You'd just be like, "Yeah, I'm, I'm just gonna do it myself." Yeah, I, I, I think I, I could probably I, build I, a bridge. Self-taught nuclear engineer is how I like to think of myself now. If you just remove this, <laughs> this cesium from this, uh, this, this here. Uh... In fairness, in 1926, all nuclear engineers were self-taught. Yeah, I know, <laughs> man. God damn it. <laughs> Not a lot of formal training in that area. Um, <laughs> yeah, it's just two guys. Yeah. Welcome to Mr. Ed, Mr. Ed and Mr. Eddie's nuclear science yeah. research facility. Please yeah. wear gloves. Yeah, I definitely didn't do that. Um, so this physiotherapist, apparently you could just as a physiotherapist build a bridge back then. He got he got he got the permits. He got the investors lined up. But it was 1927, you know, um, uh, the Great Depression hit like before they started construction. Nope, no money. Um, turns mm. out maybe when physiotherapists are talking about building eleven mile bridges, that's a sign the economy's overheated. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I, I, I was when we were doing research. The fucking Bay Bri- the Bay Bri- the uh, Bri- blah, 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 bridge tunnel yeah. proposal in the twenties was just like, how you fuckers can't pull this off? What are you talking about? <laughs> So yeah, for the next couple decades, there's some rumblings about br- building a bridge, or a tunnel, or a bridge tunnel, right? Mm-hmm. Where you'd a have a, yeah, a you'd have a you'd have a bridge Ugh. that would go out until the shipping channel, and then would go in a tunnel, and then it would come back up. It would continue along as a bridge, um, which is what they do in Norfolk, Virginia, and the Hampton yep. Roads area. Um, you know, but at some point. They're still running this ferry service. It started to lose money, but it's still essential transportation. So in the 1944, I think the Port Authority buys it out. And all of a sudden, this Port Authority, which is a relatively new authority at this point, they're tasked with operating this expensive ferry. And they're like, ah, we don't want to do this. This sucks. Let's build a bridge. Hell yeah. Is somebody in my fucking house? Uh, yes, you know. y- you are. Oh, jeez. Uh, 
I'm good. Okay. Everything's fine. You're good? Right. Okay. Yeah. yeah. My fucking audio, my uh, headphone interface has many tangled cables because I'm a lazy slob who can't ever fucking untangle shit. So. Don't worry about it. I'm I'm needing to switch over to a new mixer, and that's going to be chaos for a while afterwards. Yeah. Oh my god. Okay. I I have relieved some of the giant tangle. I guess this is what I'm doing. Uh. Yeah. Go ahead. Sorry, cutting, everybody. Cutting the Gordian knot here. It, dude. It's <laughs> it looks it looks like a Jeff Koon sculpture, man. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> so these two engineering firms, Bale Horton and Associates, and. Parsons, Brinkerhoff, Hogan, and McDonald, which I believe still exists as Parsons, Brinkerhoff, uh, they were awarded a contract to design the bridge in December 1944, but the process sort of stalls out due to lack of funding and finally gets going in 1950, right? Hmm. R.I.P. to Hogan and McDonald, I guess. Yeah, yeah they, they were undesirables. Yes. <laughs> this organization does not tolerate failure. Now we've decided. We've decided to. Uh, <laughs> we've decided the Scots are no longer good at cantilever bridges. <laughs> <laughs> this is discrimination. This is bullshit. Stop drinking so much Buckfast. <laughs> Absolutely not. So uh, I, <laughs> they looked into it, found out that Scots didn't actually invent the cantilever. Fired these two guys on the spot. Yeah. Oh. Hi, it's Justin. Uh, so this is a commercial for the podcast that you're already listening to. Uh, people are annoyed by these, so let me get to the point. We have this thing called Patreon, right? The deal is you give us two bucks a month, and we give you an extra episode once a month. Uh, sometimes it's a little inconsistent, but, you know, it's two bucks. You get what you pay for. Um, it also gets you our full back catalog of bonus episodes, so you can learn about exciting topics like guns, pickup trucks, or pickup trucks with guns on them. The money we raise through Patreon goes to making sure that the only ad you hear on this podcast is this one. Anyway, that's something to consider if you have two bucks to spare each month. Uh, join at patreon.com forward slash WTYP pod. Do it if you want. Or don't. It's your decision, and we respect that. Back to the show. This is big competition to name the bridge, right? They have a uh, July Fourth, nineteen fifty. There's this day long celebration in Saint Petersburg called Spans Across the Bay. That's where they were like, okay, we're gonna call it the Sunshine Skyway Bridge, um, which was. Submitted by Virginia Seymour of Indian Rocks, Florida. Um, some rejects it's... included the Magic Carpet, the Loveland Span, the Pearly Gates, the Glory Road, Aladdin's Ramp, <laughs> and the, the Garden of Eden. What I, the fuck, yo? <laughs> I think they should have kept Aladdin's Ramp. I like I... Glory Road. <laughs> <laughs> the Glory Road? The Glory Road. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you're just, dri like... you're just driving along, you get a knock to, you know, roll your window down, and just a uh, dick comes through. 60 yeah. mile an hour <laughs> hand job doesn't sound like fun. <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> oh, the 150 and a half foot club. <laughs> oh my god! Yeah, I like the I I I like Aladdin's ramp too. Um, mm -hmm. uh, Aladdin, not sorry, really famed oh, for his ramp for one thing. Real he real heads know it's the Glory Road. Yeah. <laughs> so the um they con they, the the contractor was the Virginia Bridge and Iron Company of Roanoke, of Roanoke. Virginia. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Learned that today so, when I was doing research for this. Yeah. <laughs> In October of 1950, they started work on the 11 mile span. And they're like, this is the greatest sort of like co project between Virginia and Florida since the late unpleasantness, you know? Yes. Oh, the vapors. <laughs> Kelly, the vapors. So, well, the between the states. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's what it was. That's, yep. That's the, the, <laughs> the wall of northern aggression. Somebody put that. Somebody find us a photo of Hood losing his fucking arm at Gettysburg. <laughs> so this original bridge, it was eleven miles long. Most of it's a very simple causeway because the bay is very shallow. Right in the center to span the uh, shipping channel, the roadway climbed one hundred and fifty feet, 
went over this cantilever span that was a hundred and excuse me, eight hundred and sixty four feet long. Big bridge. Right. Yeah, big, big bridge. So the bridge all told was the longest bridge in the United States when it opened in September 1954, but it was very, very quickly passed by a few other causeways, most notably the 24 mile Lake Pontchartrain causeway in 1956. Louisiana excellence. Yes. Mm -hmm. Um, You know, one of the things there is you sort of look at the highway infrastructure there and it was all built in 1950 something and none of it's been upgraded. It looks like Mm -hmm. New Jersey. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, New Jersey, uh, but like with a distinctly Louisiana flavor of corruption. So like yes. every, everybody building those bridges surnamed long for some reason, uh, um, call it Baton Rouge at 900 decibels every hour on the hour, <laughs> like your admission barbecue when they play the fucking national anthem or whatever. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. So the, each of those bridges supports an entire ecosystem of do nothing jobs. <laughs> yeah, subsidizes the the, the, the state's Good. bartenders um, and fish fryers. Like I say, longism, longism. You can do a lot worse as an ideology. <laughs> so uh, one of the things about this is, you know, as much as it was the longest bridge in the United States, one of the longest in the world when it opened, it was kind of, you know, it's. Not that remarkable of a structure, you know. It causeways are pretty easy. It's just this post and beam bridge over and over again. You got a big cantilever span in the middle. You got two ramps, but this had been done before. It was this is bigger than any of them, but you know, this is not like a crazy feat of engineering. Did did people like it? Was it convenient? Was it useful? Yeah, yeah. Loads of people loved it. Yeah, it was very successful. Crowded up with vacationers, commuters. Carried fifteen thousand eighty six cars on its first day. It had dollar seventy five toll, so it made a bunch of money. Idling in the hot sun, one hundred and fifty feet over Tampa Bay, pre air conditioning. uh, Yeah, but you you, you got the cool breezes from the ocean, right? You know, Uh, Uh, you also got like it's before climate change happened, so it was cooler in general. (laughs) You know, it's actually quite a pleasant experience, I assume. So uh, here, here's some pictures from the opening ceremonies. Um, oh, of course they had fucking like the Sunshine Skyway girls. Oh, of course the, they did. Yeah, yeah. The little like uh, Sunshine Skyway themed hats uh, and you know bathing suits. I mean, yeah. this is all good tourism stuff, right? It's like come to Florida. We are uh, attractive women. Yes, Rika. This is from Saint Petersburg Times. Um, Rika Dialina. Miss Grease hands a replica well, of the Sunshine Skyway to acting Governor Charlie Johns at the bridge acting opening Governor ceremony. Charlie Johns yeah. is what? sweating like yeah. a <laughs> priest in a whorehouse. He's yeah. Mm. Yeah. schwitzing like a priest in a daycare. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And also, I guess I, I should say at this time for Florida, Miss Grease, pretty exotic, all things yes, considered. This is true. Like, I mean, people people think that Florida was like always tourism. This is like right at the birth of that. Like Florida was like indistinguishable from Alabama for like a long time. Um, still is in bits, but like the more yeah. north you go, the more south it gets. Uh, well, yes, quite. John's placed the bridge in the center of the map of Florida's west coast in the rear, linking the ten counties together. The counties: Citrus, Hernando, Pasco, Hillsborough, P- Pinellas, Manatee, Sarasota, Charlotte, Lee, and Collier were each represented by Skyway princesses, each wearing a bright red, red bathing suit. <laughs> I, I, I'm pointing, that is a county sona. Um, <laughs> and, and, and while I can imagine being charmed by being Miss Charlotte or Miss yeah. Lee, being Miss Manatee... Yeah, that's... it feels a little hurtful. <laughs> yes. And this is a picture from the initial motorcade across the bridge. Um... Skyway crossing begins, and the motorcade pauses halfway up the main span to give dignitaries a chance to look back over the Sunshine Skyway, open to traffic. It is cool um, that you can get that view, like yeah. uh, mm, seeing it sort of like trail away behind you. But uh, also, I know what I do for a living, which means I'm also obliged to take this as a sort of monument to man's hubris. Yeah, Florida you man's should, hubris. You, you should be doing that. They did the opening ceremony twice, once at each end. Um, 
really they fucked up by not calling it Aladdin's ramp, you know, because if yeah, they called it Aladdin's ramp, having yeah. having sort yeah. of like having Allah's name in there, I think would have protected. Yeah, definitely it from this, uh, definitely from this postcard here, it looks like Aladdin's ramp. <laughs> <laughs> Moonlight over Lower Tampa Bay. Yep. Horrifyingly sort of like green hued. <laughs> Okay, right. This is this is redundant notes, but here is uh, uh, another shot of the bridge. Shortly after it opened, here you can see it in use by traffic. Two lane that's a, that's bridge, an abrupt curve. Like, oh yeah, um, really gains a lot of what on earth. That was very really. And, oh, uh, I like I like the hump. Yeah, that's yeah. Down. <laughs> it's like that's a bunny a, hill on a coaster. Five percent grade right there. All the way up wow. to the top, and then it goes right back down. Yikes. That would be fun that's... in a truck, and by fun I mean horrible. Yeah, yeah steep. You know, it's, yeah, it's uh, not, even, not even uncommon for bridges of the Zara. I think, you know, like the uh, the Chesapeake Bay Bridge, not the big one, but the small one has a similar grade. Um, you know, that, 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 that this was built to the standards of the time. It's very much a bridge of its time, right? Mm, sure. Um, so, we can't judge it by modern standards. Yeah, you know, cancel exactly. Culture exactly. You know, so there were some problems with the span, right? It's very narrow, but it was signed for 45 miles an hour. There's no shoulders. There's no light. You just blast right over oh, this yeah, in, your, yeah. in like the longest car and you've DUI ever seen. DUI isn't le yeah. isn't illegal yet, so yeah, exactly. yeah. You're, you're going from like one bar to another across the bay. <laughs> you beach the car on the top of the thing. Uh, just like take out like a shitload of asphalt with it. Cool. Yeah, it 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 had no shoulders. Had no. There's no lights on the bridge. Nice. Um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So yeah, it's of its time, and you know, once they pass the Federal Aid Highway Act, it's kind of like, well, let's let's see if we can run an interstate highway on it, right? Oh, that's bold. But that involves building a second bridge, right? They had a second modernized span. The second span was a little nicer. It had a shoulder. It was a little wider. You know, this this starts construction in 1967. It opens in 1971. Interstate 275 was routed over the pair of bridges. They had much less elaborate opening ceremonies, but, you know, with the pair of bridges, it was at least much safer than the single bridge configuration, right? Hmm. Uh, still not That's a redundancy, great... you know? Yeah. Right. Still not a great place to break down, though. No. That you get, no. Getting, like, towed off of this down a 5% grade. Don't like that. Uh, yeah. Yeah, in the or... dark. Yeah, oh, or, yeah, or someone dark. just wrecks mm. into you at the door bottom. Door is shallow. Yeah. You can swim. <laughs> not this bit, though. Like, yeah, no, this is right. been dredged. Bit. Yeah, right, this right, is right, the dredge right, right, right. Yeah, I mean, every, everything else is like, I don't know, six feet deep. You know, but <laughs> here, ooh. I don't like what Raj just says, ooh. Yeah. Mm. Here's a slide oh. where I forgot to put a picture. <laughs> it's, it's, it's a podcast with slides, without slides. Without no. slides. This is a slide I asked Liam to do. I, ah. I, ah, no, that was struggle I, session. I, yeah, sorry. I was at the post office getting fingerprinted. <laughs> and then I thought you guys had done that because I told you I was still at the post office. Uh, do, do you want to disclose no. why you were getting fingerprinted at the post office? I'm going to be a mailman. Hell uh, yeah. You finally got that big federal government job. You're going to get that fed money. Uh, we wish you every success with it. And also, the surreal experience anyone who like listens to the podcast gets opening the door to you delivering their mail. Um, yes, yes, incredible. Uh, do we have any notes on the Capricorn and Blackthorn running into each other, or just what I have? Just what you have, yeah. Okay, so I, uh, I, bu -bu 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 -bu, hang on one second. Yeah, so on January 28th, uh, 1980, uh, the first Ooh, the person... Rare, the bridge, rare Liam date. Yeah, you know? uh, so there's a U.S. Coast Guard cutter called Blackthorn, which originally had been built in Ross's ancestral home of Duluth. Oh, and nice. uh, it, uh, it's being, it had originally been an icebreaker, it gets reassigned, and it's in Tampa Bay for refurbishment. And then oh, what they happens, send it to Florida on vacation. And then yeah. what happens? Yes, and it never comes home because no. it runs into a fucking tanker. 
<laughs> it runs into a fucking tanker. And the the I, I'm not gonna do research live on this podcast. I have some notes. Sorry, everybody. Again, I was I was I was on other business this morning. But uh they let an ensign uh have command of the cutter. And he obviously is inexperienced. Uh the the two collide. Uh the co- the cutter loses I believe 30 men could be wrong. Wow. Uh, yeah, yeah. Well, it goes down real fast. Uh, I mean, like I the, the, one, the, the one dredged channel in an extremely shallow yeah. bay, it just donks right into the fucking... Yeah, you're like... Yeah, you're like, it loses you're like... 23 crew members. Uh, 27 survived the collision, so not great. Uh, basically, uh, Blackthorn... Uh, the anchor, the anchor from the tanker Capricorn, essentially ripped into the hull of Blackthorn. Ooh. Ripped it open above the waterline. I uh, how the uh, fuck Black do you Thorn... rip open an icebreaker as well? Like, yeah, a great question. I uh, take some doing. Blackthorn tips on her sides, capsized. 27, 23 men die. Uh, yeah, uh, there's an ensign who's at the command because. Uh, the actual Don't let them do it, folks. Uh, Lieutenant Commander Seppel uh, was just like trying to figure out the uh, the new propulsion system, which wasn't fucking working. Uh, they also uh, they were supposed to pass starboard to starboard, which is uh, they were Classic, supposed to pass yeah. port to port, which is your, what you're supposed to do. Uh, then Capricorn couldn't make contact with the ensign aboard the Blackthorn. They were going to pass starboard to starboard. Ensign Ryan had no idea what to do, and then they just ran into each other. So basically, you did the sort of like Bob's Burgers thing where Tina's learning to drive, where she's just like too paralyzed by fear to do anything yeah, and just yeah, runs yes. it into the he only. Had no idea that... what to do. Yeah. <laughs> cool. Okay. Yeah. I also see here that this may be the fault of the Soviet Union somehow. Oh, uh, yes. Cold there War. was a, a, a Soviet passenger ship called the Kazakhstan, which had been overtaken, which overtook the, uh, the Blackthorn. Uh, and there's some people because the Blackthorn uh, navigates almost mid channel and then comes back. And there's some belief that basically the lights of the passenger ship dazzled both crews into not seeing each other. But I think <laughs> you're the, the, ha- the, I, you're the having easiest the explanation ultimate is, level disco is, ch- is child is piloting this ship y- y- and doesn't y- know what ha- to do. I- You've got the disco ball on. You're on a Soviet cruise ship off of Tampa Bay. So I assume you've just been to Cuba. I, I'm confused because it's like, what did they come into port at St. Petersburg? And the guy had to say, "Sorry, wrong one." Wrong. <laughs> sorry. Hey, whoa, whoa. Sorry. Hey, hey. Put the guns down. Put the oh, guns down. No, 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 no. Wrong. St. Petersburg. Uh, <laughs> you're looking for Leningrad, actually. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's because me and the Antifa have been over changing all the signs. You know. Yeah, I really struggle to imagine like a passenger ship dazzling you in that way. Yeah, like, yeah. I don't know how how yeah, true that, that one's going to be. That doesn't seem like it makes sense to me. Mm. It seems like the just bridge avoid... gets out of this okay, right? Yes. Yeah, it's just off the bridge. It, it does. They don't okay. run into the bridge until very, very close. Four but... months later. Yeah. Oh, no. Actually, the anniversary of this was yesterday. Wow. May 9th. See, I didn't even think about that. It's time I'm here for. So, this is the motor vessel Summit Venture. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, It was built in 1976 by the Oshima Shipbuilding Company of Nagasaki, Japan. Registered in Liberia. uh, Yes. For convenience (laughs) sake. Yes, uh, you see here it registered in Monrovia. That happened later. 609 feet long, 85 foot beam. I don't know how much draft. Um, 19,735 gross tons. This says uh, self-unloading bulker. That's what all these cranes are for, right? They're supposed to have big claws on them. They lift up the bulk cargo and dump it on the dock, right? Uh, you know, bulk is coal, iron, cement, grains, fertilizer, so on and so forth. In this case, it's of course in phosphate service because a whole lot of phosphate is made in Florida. Mm-hmm. Um, so they're entering uh Tampa Bay, right, on May 9th, 1980. Um, go pick up some phosphates, 
going to go pick up some phosphates. So they're running empty. They're running pretty high in the water. Um, now, Tampa Bay is a shallow harbor, right? So they're shipping channels in there that have been dredged into it to make room for these bigger ships. Navigating these narrow channels is difficult. So guys called pilots board the ship outside the bay. At, um, That's pilots, not pirates. It's yeah, pi- pilots. <laughs> yes, I mean bring uh, back pirates boarding ships outside of harbors, yes. but yes. they boarded this key, which I forget what it is. Um, it's in the notes somewhere. Um, butt key, yeah, butt key. Uh, and they take over piloting the ship into the harbor. Right, the pilot is in charge. I mean, the captain still has final authority, but the pilot is the one steering the ship. Right. Um, hmm. Or rather, the pilot is the one telling the helmsman how to steer the ship. There's many layers of command here. Um, At the end of the day, it's, it all boils down to a terrified teenager uh, yeah, steering yeah. the thing. <laughs> but yeah, the, the, the captain is in charge at sea, but the pilot is in charge near land, right? So pilot John Lara was in charge here. He boarded, I believe, at about 4.30 in the morning at Edgemont Key. So yeah, it's right here. Uh, what we previously referred to as Butt Key. It's Edgemont mm-hmm. Key. Oh, right? we're going to have to rename that along with St. Petersburg now. Yeah, exactly. I, I, it's, it will always be Butt Key to me. Yeah, Butt Key and Butt Grad. Um, <laughs> butt Grad. <laughs> <laughs> um, now, he had done this run about 788 times before, right? So he's... Just enough times to get cocky. Yeah. <laughs> um, so... It's it's early, you know, it's dark out, um, it's overcast, uh, there's a bit of mist coming down, but otherwise eh, the weather is okay. You know, it's not it's not like great weather, but it's okay weather, right? So mm. he starts piloting the, the ship down the channel. Um around 7:30 is when he's approaching the bridge, right? As he's as he's going though the weather starts to get worse, right? Um, so the fog starts to get worse. The rain gets heavier, right? Um, so he's like sending lookouts to the front of the ship to help him guide the thing. He's, um, you know, he's relying a lot on his radar as opposed to anything visual. Um, he's gonna get Bermuda triangled. Sounds like he's about to get Bermuda triangled. Um, sort of. Uh, at this point, also, uh, the captain, I forget his name, he's, um, uh, it's later in the notes. The captain is getting worried. This will be relevant for later litigation, where it was really hard to find the, to research that, especially in the amount of time we have. I'm sorry, folks, my computer broke, so uh, this had to get put together really quick. Um, <laughs> so, uh, so, someone commented on the, the most recent bonus that they really like it when we do a rushed episode and an emergency and uh, the monkey's paw curled. You know? Good news. Exactly, right. <laughs> Good fucking news, folks. Uh, Captain and the first mate are concerned they don't do anything. Uh, the, the pilot, cool. uh, John, love, John love Laro, to hear is concerned, doesn't do anything. Doesn't do anything, yeah. But you yeah. got the guy right there who's supposed to know what he's doing. He's done oh, it like 18,000 Eight, times yeah, before. Yeah, exactly, you know? right. You know, all he does is go from the key into the harbor and back. Presumably he knows what he's doing. There's also sort of an informal company policy of do not interfere with the pilot ever. Um <laughs> That legally so, counts as a hijacking. Yeah. So Laro guides the ship towards the bridge. The fog is getting worse. Then the microburst happens. Oh, right. what? The microburst. microburst. What the fuck is a microburst? Oh, I'm about to tell you that. So a microburst is an extremely severe but extremely localized thunderstorm. Right? It's kind of the reverse of a tornado. Um, they make those yes. like yes yes yeah living in the I, united states means you just hear about the weirdest fucking weather possible all the time yeah I, we've, you've we've got too much hit. land over there yeah we, we've gotten hit by microbursts here in philly i, I think mm-hmm. not, not even that long ago you no. know I, I it happens every once in a while you know so i've never it, heard of this fucking thing yeah so it's, it's sort of uh you know there, suddenly there's this you know a tornado kind of sucks things up this sucks things down uh, a lot of rain a lot of precipitation, hail, you know, there's lots and lots of wind that sort of goes out. Um, so you suddenly have this 70 mile an hour sustained wind out of nowhere. Um, you know, yeah, it's very, very localized. 
when you get very heavy precipitation and very heavy winds, all of a sudden, well, just out like, of nowhere. Fuck this ship in particular. Yeah. Yes, exactly. It's like the cartoon thing where one guy has a cloud over his head. Uh, <laughs> yeah. But it's a shipping container or a yes. shipping vessel. So at this point, Laro, you know, he's navigating by radar and his lookouts, but the precipitation from the microburst makes the radar useless. His lookouts can't see anything, right? Right as he was approaching the bridge. And uh, he was suddenly blown. Keep in mind, this vessel is running light and uh, as a result has very little draft. There's not, not much stopping it from being buffeted by the wind. He's blown by a sudden 70 mile an hour wind onto a collision course with the bridge. Does he do, like, does he know that? Is there like a moment where the sort of like the clouds part and the, you know, he's like, wait a second, we're, we're at 30,000 feet. Why is there a goat in front of me? Sort of like, <laughs> moment of horror <laughs> well he knows the situation is bad but he didn't know how bad until the bridge came in view this will happen in the span of like minutes um mm. you know the bridge comes in view and they are not aligned to go through the channel they are aligned to go into one of the bridge piers <laughs> so lero orders full reverse drop the anchor the ship was now moving fast enough that collision was inevitable Right, they weren't going to be able to slow it down in time, but they were also moving slow enough that they couldn't really steer, because um, boats are funny like that. You know, you you, mm. you have the most control when they're moving fast. Um, <laughs> you just got to gun it, you know. Um, yeah. See if you can't sort of like Tokyo drift it through. Yes, exactly. So just you're like, off the deck <laughs> <laughs> at seven thirty eight a.m. The ship oh, no. wreck, wrecked into the bridge. Donk. Took a Greyhound bus with it. Yeah. Um, so some of the images you see of the Sunshine Skyway collapse are kind of misleading because the ship did wind up backing off after hitting the bridge. What we see Look, here sorry, is... Sorry, sorry. Sorry. <laughs> Let me try this again. Smacks yeah, and do exactly. it again. <laughs> what we see here, we see the MV... Uh, uh, whatchamacallit, some adventure is parked up next to one of the big bridge piers, right? Um, which is what the ship initially hit. And then it was diverted and it hit this bridge pier, which you may notice is not there. Oh, just scrape down the side. Yeah. Ugh. And this is where the mechanics of the cantilever bridge come into play. Um, because engineers had anticipated bumps and bruises from shipping on the main piers, right? Uh, and in fact, several ships had struck the bridge before and there was no incident, right? Mm. But what was not anticipated was the ship would hit one of the piers that was outside of the shipping channel. Um, sure. And this was the worst one to hit right here. Um <laughs> It's like if you, if you go back to that diagram of the three guys, it's like Kicking one of their arms. Yes, if you if you kicked out the uh, you kicked the weights actually is what what right. happened. Oh, uh, okay. If you kicked out the weights, well, I'll I'll demonstrate in a, a following slide. Um, you know, so here here's a, a something from the the NTSB report. You can see these are the sections of bridge which collapsed, um, all from hitting this one pier. Right. Ooh. Yeah. Yeah. So that's a good that's a good chunk of it. We can, I think, demonstrate this. We can show this in the next slide. Okay, so we have this. This is a very pixelated, or very low resolution photo. Um, you can see this this pier here. This is from the one of the newer the newer bridge. It had to be reinforced because it was on a bad foundation, but that's not relevant to this accident. So the boat hits this pier, right, and just demolishes it. I believe the pilot said it looked like. Uh, yeah, it looked like it came down like it was made by, with cornmeal or something like that, right? Oof. So this pair is doing two things uh, we can see on the other bridge, um, which is it's supporting this section of uh, truss deck here, right? Yeah. But it's also pulling down on the end of the cantilever uh, 
because that is counteracting the force from here on the same cantilever uh, from the center span, right? So what happens when you get rid of that pier? Uh, the answer is the entire, this deck here is simply supported. It just falls into the water. It sort of rotates into there. Um, the cantilever, on the other hand, is now, now there's nothing to counteract the force from here. So it hmm. starts to rotate up. Oh no! Oh, yeah. I don't want the whole bridge yeah. to pivot. Like yeah. no, you know? no, no. And essentially, the center span just drops, and this rotates up. We don't know how much because there's no eyewitness accounts because everyone died. Um, <laughs> yeah. How many people were were on this fucking thing? It's like seven in the morning, right? So like. Oh, when it happened, there were only, uh, I think, three people actually on that span of the bridge, but uh, there was a lot of fog. Um, mm. <laughs> so we'll get to that uh, soon. So this thing, the whole thing rotates up and then just sort of falls in the water that way. Um, you know, this is, this is, uh, it's a very wild ride for anyone who was on there, but we won't know about it because, you know, they died. Um <laughs> Yeah, ask ask yeah. them about it when you get up there. You know. Yeah, and then uh, you know the other thing is uh, since one pier went before the other because there's sort of two piers per pier. There's two columns, I guess you would say. It also twisted as it did it. You can see how the the wreckage is lying in the water. A free roller coaster ride, you know, yeah. in yes. a sort of horrifying way. Please, yeah, yeah exactly. Exactly. Mr. Tampa's wild ride. Yeah, that instantly <sighs> kills you. The bridge that kills yeah. you instantly. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Only the Sunshine Skyway can reduce an entire Floridian to a soup like homogenous. Yes. <laughs> um, so there's several casualties here, right? Um, you know, three cars and a truck were on the bridge when it collapsed. They fell in the water. Um, but again, there's a lot of fog. There's this microburst. There's everything. Uh, so three more cars and a Greyhound bus just drive off the end. Oh, fuck. Oh, yeah. That. yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, yep. Yeah. Yep. But, oh, oh that God. sucks. Yeah. Yes. Imagine the bus. The bus was, yeah. uh, I believe, mostly full of college students. Yeah. Uh, oh. Yeah. So, you know, in total, six cars, one truck, and a Greyhound bus fall off the bridge. 35 occupants of the vehicles were killed. The only survivor who fell off the bridge was uh, Wesley McIntyre, whose Ford Courier pickup truck bounced off the hull of the Summit Venture and into the water. <laughs> wow. Built with Ford Tough. I mean, like... Yeah, yeah. Yeah. You'll never buy another brand, will you? Like... Yeah, exactly, right? <laughs> and then the ship's crew fished them out, you know, but this is a 150-foot drop. It's not a very survivable fall. Um, but you have a few vehicles who've managed to stop right before the big hole in the bridge, most notably this vehicle, which belonged to a... Uh, Richard Hornbuckle, who managed to stop about 14 inches from the end of the bridge. Um, Incredible. Yeah. I know this old shitty 70s car with shitty brakes, uh, but I wonder how a modern vehicle would perform, considering it could be much heavier. I was going to say, like, you throw, like, an SUV or something at this. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know. Don't like those odds. No. Yeah, and this this is another. This is one of those visuals the press goes mad at. Um, oh yeah, it's crazy. Yeah. It's like, a great yeah. photo. <laughs> Get some great photos off of this. Yeah. Absolutely. Um. So yeah, the the Sunshine Skyway Bridge it collapsed. There is uh, recordings of the Mayday call that um, uh, the pilot sent uh, when he collapsed the bridge or when he he accidentally collapsed the bridge, which are. Sort of like the Coast Guard takes uh, like several minutes to register. Wait, he collapsed the bridge. Um, oh boy, yeah, get yeah. the nets! Yeah, get was, the nets! Yeah. So it's something that's difficult to communicate the enormity of what you've just done yeah, yeah, over uh, a radio. Uh, right. you know? that kind of screwed up. I mean, that's the most that's that's a all time embarrassing moment having to radio the Coast Guard that you took down a bridge. Um, <laughs> yeah, you know. I, so. The bridge collapsed, um, and sort of like, all right, what do we do now? Um, the rescue effort was, well, they saved the one guy. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's not really a rescue effort. That's incidental. He yeah. sort of like bounces onto you. That's like, 
Yeah, I mean, there there was no one there that was able to respond in any meaningful way. It, it, people just died. Um, mm. There's fog, I mean, what are you yeah. going to do? Right. Uh, there's a couple boats who showed up pretty quick, and they couldn't do very much. Just couldn't see anything, um, I assume, yeah. Yeah, mm. well, there's also no one who was like... Everyone was in their cars, and the cars immediately sank. Right. <laughs> you know. Um, and, and it was about a yeah, 67, like 67 mile per hour impact with the uh, ground or with the water. So, Ooh. you know, eh, not in the an most 80s car, too. In, like... Yeah, no, nah, 70s car. Ooh. Yeah. So, all right. What happened? Who is to blame, right? Um, John Lero, the pilot, is cleared of all charges by the Coast Guard and by a grand jury. He said uh, he, they, he acted reasonably in the circumstances. That seems fair enough to me. Like, yeah. m- mysterious act of God's love here, I think. Right. Kind of was like, you know, he, well, the fun thing is he was able to successfully argue that it was an act of God, but the company was not. <laughs> <laughs> That good. That's the sort of legal yeah. presumption we should yeah. be working with. Yeah. Uh, Wesley McIntyre managed to sue the company that ran uh, Summit Venture into the bridge for one hundred seventy-five thousand dollars, which I'm sure went to like medical bills and legal fees. I mean, these uh, days that's like five hundred thousand dollars. Yeah, that's a good um, point. So probably he got, he paid off like you know one percent of his medical bills with that. Yeah, well, it was mm-hmm. it was nineteen eighty though. Medical bills were less expensive back then. Well, yeah, that's true. Uh, the court ultimately finds the captain and the company are at fault, uh, which you might ask why that when you know the uh, the pilot was the one driving the ship. Um, anyway, the district court found unequivocally the circumstances surrounding the approach to the bridge made such a case of great necessity <laughs> that it was blatant negligence <laughs> on the part of Captain <laughs> Lou. To allow his ship to proceed under the control of pilot Lara after Captain Lou became aware, or should have become aware of the inevitable risk of the accident. Indeed, Captain Lou testified that he had been concerned for the safety of the vessel for approximately 10 minutes before the collision. Moreover, while on paper, the ship owner followed the IMCO rules and regulation uh, recommendations. I'm not sure what IMCO is. The evidence showed that the actual National practice Maritime of the cargo organization. Uh, I bet. Yeah, that sounds about right. The evidence showed the actual practice of the company was to permit all navig- navigational decisions to be made by a pilot while it went on board, and that the master could only relieve the pilot if he were acting in a drunken or crazy manner. According to po- Port Captain... <laughs> Did they really say a drunken or crazy manner? Yes. I love Florida legal love Florida. English. Oh, no, that was according to the, uh, the company, the company that was based out of Lake. Oh, okay. Mm. Yeah. According to Port Captain Chang, the ship owner's policy was that the pilot is command in, in charge, right? The, accordingly, the district court found that Captain Liu's adherence to the company's policy constituted negligence when he relinquished to Pilot Laro his responsibility for the safety of the ship, right? It's the uh, Intergovernmental Maritime Consultative Organization, which is some uh, great sort of UN English. What, the IMCO? So- yeah, the IMCO. That that doesn't match uh, the acronym. It, what international maritime it, intergovernmental maritime? Yeah, it should be IGMCO. Maybe they, maybe they changed it to sound cooler. Um, anyway, I I had a hard time researching like exactly what transpired from this lawsuit. I believe the ship owners got the pants suit off of them. Reasonable. Yeah, uh, I, I, you have to expect that the Tampa Bay Port Authority wants its money back. Uh, yes, and um, you know one one effect of this is that the Sunshine Skyway was brought back down to two lanes. Um, oh yeah, because they so the redundancy. You know, they still have the original one. Yeah, the original one actually still worked fine. Um, it was not really affected by the uh, collapse of the newer one. So you're back to the bad old bridge. No lights, um, no shoulders. Yeah. No lights, no shoulders. Uh, here you can sort of see the debris removal. Um, so this is the center span, which you will notice after having dropped 150 feet is basically in perfect condition. Oh, shit. That's, wait, that's not a new one? That's the original one they'd, like, dropped in the fucking ocean? Yeah, I believe so. Um, we don't build they're, they're, like still, yes, yeah. they're still using, like, the broken span to raise it out of the water. 
this may be during deconstruction of the new one. Now that I think about it, I, ignore this slide. Um, no, it's cool. Yeah. Yeah. That's but cool. you know, this is the, you can see how the cantilever bridge works. You can, uh, you can just, uh, yeah, it's actually gotta be the new one because there you can see a pier here anyway, but you can sort of see how the bridge, uh, the cantilever bridge can support the cantilever span, even when it's in a different position. Um, mm. You know, so this is, um, they start deconstructing the old bridge fairly quickly because uh, they start building a new bridge. Um, Again, remember when we used to build things in this country mm -hmm, after yeah. we destroyed the previous things? Mm hmm. So I do kind of genuinely believe that this would just like sit there as like a two-lane bridge now. Yeah. Yeah. So, well, for several years it is a two-lane span. Um, you know, they they have the old one left up for a long time. Uh folks who are driving across the two-lane span, they generally sort of uh describe the experience of going across it as very eerie because, you know, you got a bridge next to you, you got a bridge next to you, you got a bridge next to you. Suddenly you don't. Um, mm. it's like, damn, that could happen to me. Um, including, uh, that's something my mom told me a long time ago, cause she used to have to go over this bridge fairly often to visit the family in Naples. Um, mm. Mm. yeah. Um, 1983, they start building the replacement span. It's inspired by a bridge. Governor Bob Graham had seen on a vacation in Normandy. He was just like, yeah, build okay. that one. Yeah. All right. <laughs> just build that one. Fair, fair um, enough, I guess. Yeah, it's like uh, two lanes each direction with a shoulder, so it's safer. It's a big cable stayed span. And they add these things called dolphins, right? And what your dolphin does is it's a big, in this case, a big concrete block. So if another ship comes in and smashes into it, it smashes into the dolphin instead of smashing into the piers. Oh, right? They made like a catch fence, but for boats. Yes. That's cool. I do, you don't really see those often, even in a lot of like sort of like heavily like boat trafficked bridges. Um, yeah, this one, this one, they this one they went all in because they're like, we're not going to do that. That's not going to happen again. Mm. Too embarrassing if it did, you know. Yes. Yeah. Well, uh, the new bridge was opened in 1987, but the day before it opened, a shrimping vessel crashed directly into one of the dolphins. Hell yeah! Yeah. <laughs> Um, Why not, man? Yeah. Um, and what happened was the dolphin was fine, and someone towed the shrimp shrimping vessel away, and then it sank. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> it's it's good. It's it's like sort of established an appropriately defensive aspect now. It's like I will kill any boat that hits me. Yes. And then um, you know, they start deconstructing the original bridge or demolishing it, right? Uh, in 1990. Mm. Um, some of it was done manually. A lot of it was done with controlled explosives. Uh, and some of it was preserved as a fishing pier. Huh. And now you just have the one solitary, extremely defended bridge. Yes, yeah, so you have the most yeah. defensible bridge um, in Florida, at least. Still a sort <laughs> of remarkable grade on this as well. Uh, oh, yeah. I mean, it's it's it 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 does end a lot further along because this is built to modern interstate standards as opposed to nineteen sixty interstate standards. But yeah, you can see it on the next slide too. It's like yeah, yeah. Ooh. wow, Ugh. striking. There, there's some there's some telephoto work in here. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Still gives me anxiety. Don't like it. New one is about one hundred and eighty feet above the ground as opposed to one hundred and fifty. Um, there was some criticism. Some people said it should have been higher so they could let cruise ships come in. Um, oh, you don't want that. You right. really don't want that. You're going to flood your entire thing with like norovirus and also water. Look at what fucking Venice and Cozumel are having happen. Yep. Right. Cruise ships should be an episode in and of themselves. Florida. Maybe they will be. Oh, yeah. Flo Florida. It's, it's already right. the, nor the norovirus is already there, the water is already <laughs> there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what else are you really adding? Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, that's the story of the Sunshine Skyway Bridge. Mm. Um, what did we learn? 
Nothing. Fuck Absolutely nothing. But think... a bit build, fortify oh, all of your bridges. Right, right, yeah. right, right. Cannons on bridges is what we learned. Yeah. I don't think you would have had time. I don't think the cannon no, would have done it. No, that attitude. Well, yeah, that's really... why you have to have the pirates to like yeah, hijack you it. Have the pirates rise. I guess if you hadn't, you had a bunch of pirates who were really good at navigating in storms, sure, but you know. Yeah. And I guess also don't build a bridge that you can drive a cruise ship under because the idea of driving across a bridge and seeing a cruise ship underneath me is very don't troubling. Like that. It would yeah, give me anxiety. I mean the whole the whole thing there the whole thing there is uh with this disaster it does not necessarily seem like uh something you could relate to a lot of negligence. Um it was just no. kinda like Oh shit, we didn't know that could happen. <laughs> yeah. A, um, a mysterious act of God's love. But it has definitely definitely changed the way you design bridges like these near busy shipping channels ever since. Hmm. Which is curious, because I don't really see those dolphins for, for many other bridges in that in those circumstances. But oh, there's not been I'm a sure huge amount. Of other... I mean they're not retrofitting old bridges, new yeah. bridges mm. that are like this. Yeah, I'm also sure there's lots of like clever ways to like integrate them more elegantly into the design yeah. than just a bunch of hockey pucks. This is true, yeah. Well, we have a segment on this podcast on this show called Safety Third. Shake hands with danger. Ooh, How that's an intriguing diagram we've got here. Yeah. Yes. I didn't read this one before I put it in. That a boy. Oh, good. Yeah. Might have slurs in it. We don't know. Good. Good. There's no way of knowing. We never do this ahead of time. Fuck you. No. Howdy. Hi. Howdy. Howdy. I would like to share with you a safety third from my time spent doing science stuff in the Arctic. Already a perfect, <laughs> perfect opening sentence. Yeah. yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> the remote nature of the Arctic attracts all sorts of weirdos, including myself. Yeah, yeah, when we came in, there were these Norwegian guys screaming at us, don't know about what. <laughs> That's the Antarctic. Fuck! <laughs> God damn it. <laughs> oh well, we tried. But one yeah. type of weirdo it attracts is helicopter pilots. Oh no! Oh. <laughs> <laughs> helicopter pilots are a special type. Not only do they enjoy working in a loud, vibrating hot capsule full of jet fuel several hundred feet off the ground, but they also choose to work with people who are impatient assholes and want to treat their miracle of physics flying machine like it's a rental pickup truck with a chauffeur. <laughs> Where we work in the Arctic is especially remote and shitholish, so p pilots are constantly rotating through the town every six weeks throughout the busy summer season. Therefore, we are always getting used to the unique ways in which every pilot likes to work. A florid constellation of different sort of yep. personality disorders. For example, some pilots like to give a thoughtful safety walkthrough of do's and don'ts of the helicopter. No, it's... Other times I've had new helicopter pilots land at our camp, jump out of the helicopter with the turbine and rotors still running, walk over us and say, all right, let's boogie, jump in. Oh. The Chad helicopter yeah. pilot. <laughs> yeah. At the start of one of our fall field seasons, we had about four hours of helicopter time to sling a load into a bunch of equipment to sling to sling load in a bunch of equipment into our camp and we were working with a new to us pilot uh, so cool. they got recipe they got, for disaster they got a sling and there's equipment in the sling and they're going to attach it to the helicopter right yeah this is really fucking difficult nate's told me some stories about doing this uh in, in the military and some of the static discharge off of a helicopter leads you to some interesting places with uh with static electricity <laughs> We, the people staying at the camp, first helicoptered into the camp, then the next few trips, the helicopter would convey the sling loads we had previously prepared back and forth between the camp. Slings were being carried, connected to the helicopter by long lines that were a few hundred feet long. This way, we could unhook the slings after the helicopter had put them on the ground, and the helicopter could immediately turn around and fly back to base to have the next sling hooked on by someone at the base and brought out to the camp. We had made this plan with the pilot, but we did not go into enough detail about how this would specifically be done, which will become apparent in the next paragraph. Oh, God. 
The helicopter appeared over the horizon with the first sling load and gently placed it next to our camp. One of my colleagues walked over to the sling to unhook the long line from the sling load. This is something we have done at least a hundred times before during the last several years, and this is the only way we ever unhook sling loads. As he was unhooking the line from the sling, the pilot electrically released the five pound master ring from the hook at the belly of the helicopter, which was hovering Ooh. a few hundred feet directly over him. That's uh, this guy up here. Uh huh. This was a feature I was unaware of. I happened to be recording a video on my phone of my colleague doing this and was able to confirm that the master ring missed his head by only a few feet before smashing into the ground beside him. I immediately deleted the video. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's that's a good instinct to have. <laughs> I you know, uh, deny, disavow, uh, never happened. No, nothing happened. Nope, shut up. <laughs> the helicopter pilot landed after realizing what he had done and apologized profusely for nearly insta-killing my colleague. <laughs> I guess we were at fault for not communicating with the pilot about how the slings would be unhooked but I think it's the helicopter pilot's duty as the person with the expertise to inform us how things are going to go. As I said, we only ever knew and learned how to, how, how to unhook slings from the bottom. We are just nerdy scientists. We don't know about this kind of shit so much. We all learned from that day that being specific about how things will be done in potentially dangerous situations is incredibly important. Yeah, I'll say. No, you, you, you were both wrong here. Um, yeah. Like... It's, mm, you, you gotta you gotta know whether or not the guy is gonna drop a giant metal hook on top of your head from three hundred feet. Like yeah, yeah. And then we have a gruesome postscript. Oh god. Yeah. P.S. These heli helicopter incidents aren't even too bad compared to some others I've heard from my boss, who had a friend whose colleague was decapitated by a spinning rotor blade after oh, the helicopter Jesus. landed on a frozen lake. Oh, he got John Landis. Yeah. They exited the helicopter while the rotor was still spinning, and then the skid of the helicopter broke through the ice, bringing the rotor down to intercept the man's neck. Ooh, After seeing... that's, that's unforeseeable, too. That's yeah. like um, fucking some Final Destination shit, yes. you know? After seeing his research partner getting Viva La France by the Aerospatial <laughs> A-Star's rotor blade, that guy understandably decided to retire from science. Yeah, no kidding. Yeah. Pick, picked up religion. He became a deacon. <laughs> 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 Love the show. Keep up the good work from Earth Nerd. Please don't use my real name in the podcast. Thank. <laughs> Thanks. Thanks. Are you going to have to bleep Earth Nerd? I don't think Earth Nerd is his real name. I don't think so. I, heard real I don't name. know. Whatever their, I, whatever their gender is. I don't know what it is. He's going to have to bleep every instance of Earth Nerd, which makes it sound much funnier. I had a different name in the email. Okay. So I assume that's not their real name. Ah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> okay. Okay, well. Yeah, just don't don't helicopter. Don't don't, don't do it. Don't, yeah, don't do don't it. No, 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 no especially helicopters. don't especially no. don't like cargo loading operations around helicopter. Don't do that no. shit. Yeah. It's for troops and other idiots, you yes. know? Uh, like uh, well they're, they're the troops of science. Science troops. And we and we salute them, you know. Yes. Uh, yeah, so support our science troops. Um, troops. That was safety third. Uh, Shake hands for danger. Yeah, our, our next episode will be on Chernobyl. Does anyone have any commercials before we go? Us give us money so that uh, the, the two of us who us. need it like uh, have it. Yeah, Patreon.com slash. I think WTYP pod will be in the commercial. Yes. Um, yeah, I think I think that's it. I think that was a podcast. Good job, everybody. Podcast. Yeah. Yep. Uh, happy Mother's Day, everyone. Bye, everyone.